evangelist A. A. Allen welcomes you to Miracles Today, the Allen Bible telecast coming to you from the heart of the Midwinter Camp Meeting in Miracle Valley, Arizona. There are thousands of people here tonight that are seeking God and meeting God in an old-fashioned, Holy Ghost, heaven-sent miracle revival. There are people here that are sick and needy, suffering in their body, people that have come here that must have a miracle. If you're sick, suffering in your body, while you listen to this telecast, while you view these miracles that you're going to see here tonight, why don't you believe God to heal you while you sit in your home? And here once again, why don't you sing along with Gene Martin and the Miracle Valley Choir, I will not be denied, and let it be your prayer. happy privilege at this time to present to you the man that God has raised up and anointed with a dynamic supernatural miracle working ministry a ministry of commanding faith a ministry that has let this man speak the word for thousands of people around the world ladies and gentlemen God's man of faith and power world-famous evangelist A. A. Allen yes God bless you Listen, how many of you here tonight know that you have a mountain? A mountain in your life? Raise your hands. A mountain. It may be sickness. It could be disease. It could be infirmity. A mountain could be a backslidden husband or rebellious wife. It could be children that refuse to follow in the footsteps of mother and daddy. A mountain could be a financial problem. A mountain could be a broken heart, a depressed spirit that uh, causes you to be depressed, restless, sleeplessness, aimless wandering. Many of you, and listen, do you know that every other bed in America is occupied by someone who's mentally ill? People of the thousand come into these meetings that have been to the psychiatrist and the medical doctor. Say, Brother Allen, nobody can help me now. Meaning, I've got a mountain that only God can move. There's a lady on the front row with a cancer. That is a mountain. There sits a woman with a garter. That garter is a mountain. Look at the people in these wheelchairs bound to a mountain. A man got a prayer card today for the hearing aid. And he said, I can't hear the explosion of a gun without this hearing aid. He said, one ear is completely deaf. I have a little in this one. The, my sound is amplified so I can hear you when you talk. That deafness is a mountain. But before this telecast leaves your channel, I am going to pray, and God is going to remove your mountain. Yeah. Do you believe it? Yeah. I believe that whosoever, according to the words of Jesus, can have whatsoever. Yeah. Whosoever can have whatsoever. Whosoever is anyone, and whatsoever is anything in the will of God. Listen to this. Verily I say unto you, this is the 23rd verse, of Mark 11, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain an inanimate thing, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his or her heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith 
shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Not prayeth, but saith. Say this with me. He, he shall have, have whatsoever he, he saith. Shout yes. For yes. well, whosoever shall have whatsoever. Say whosoever's me. Whatsoever is my desire. Gene, come with this Miracle Valley Bible College choir and sing, God specializes. If you got any mountains, if you got any rivers, God tonight is going to cause every mountain to disappear. And this great song they're singing is on this great album of Gene Martin's. Gene Martin sings you happy, press on pure vinyl, will play almost an hour in your home. About a dozen of the greatest songs on pure, unbreakable vinyl. Pressed here in our own record factory at Miracle Valley. And it's yours for your letter this week. Just ask for Gene Martin sings you happy. <clears throat> And I have you in the mountain that you cannot come through. I want you to know that God, I come to tell you that God. I'm going to tell you that God specializes in things that are impossible, and he will do chapter of St. Mark, Christ had come from Bethany. He was hungry. 
He saw a fig tree, but there was no fruit thereon. And Jesus cursed that fig tree with a few words. But they that had followed him and they that had witnessed and enjoyed his ministry did not believe the words he spake to the fig tree. The reason they failed to believe that anything had happened when he cursed the fig tree was because immediately they saw no outstanding immediate miracle. If immediately the fig tree had withered and shrunk and fell over sideways like a man shot, they would have said, oh, look, something's happened. But nobody believed anything had happened because they couldn't see any evidence sign of God's power in action. But it was there. Yes, it, was. it was there because Jesus had spoke the word. Yes. And again and again and again, he declared, the words I speak come to you. They are spirit and they are life, according to John 6, 63. And every time Jesus spoke words, something happened. Yes. Amen. Amen. Even his worst enemies declared that no man ever spake like this man. They declared that even the sea and the winds obey him. Amen. He spoke to the dead and his words became life. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. In the first chapter of Jonah, he called to the fish and a fish can no longer stay in the bottom of the ocean. Amen? In 1 Kings 17, he talked to ravens and even told the man of God, he said, I have commanded the ravens there to sustain thee. And the ravens heard his voice and found meat and bread for a man and brought him meat and bread every morning and brought him meat and bread every night. When he spoke, the raging billows became as calm as glass. And his enemies were amazed and astounded and said, Look, no man ever spake like this man. But wherever he spoke, blind eyes were opened. Lepers were cleansed. The cripple leaped and ran like an heart. Issues of blood were stopped immediately because there was power in his words. Jesus himself said, the words I speak unto thee, they are spirit and they are life. And in the eighth chapter of Matthew, a centurion came to him who had a servant was dying. And he told him the condition the servant was in. Jesus said, I will come to your house and heal him. But the centurion said, Master, I have no need that you come to my house. You don't have to make the trip. He said, speak the word only, and my servant's going to be here. Just say something. Say something. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Listen, that was faith. And Jesus spake the word. And immediately, miles away, somewhere else received a touch. The Seraphonician woman couldn't bring her daughter to the campaign that Christ was conducting. But she said, good master, my daughter is at home, tormented with a devil. But she said, if you will speak the word, you speak the word, you speak the word, amen. She said, my daughter couldn't come, but I come to church for my daughter. I'm here proxy for somebody else. Jesus said, woman, I haven't seen so much faith in all of Israel. He said, go thy way, and when you get home, you'll find the devil is gone out of your daughter. Yeah. Hallelujah. That little woman ran all the way home, run through the gates, and here comes the daughter. said, oh, mama, while you was in church, something happened to me. Hallelujah. And the mother noticed that the daughter was a brand new girl. The load was lifted. She was delivered because a mother had gone to church for a daughter. And a mother who believed that Christ would speak the word in one place, a girl would be delivered elsewhere. Amen. Now hear me. Many of you people in this camp meeting left the mountain at home. 
When you get back from this camp meeting it back to Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Seattle, or Florida, you're saying, oh, God, when I get back home, I don't want to have to face the conditions and the situation that I left when I came here to this camp meeting. Amen. And many of you have a mountain at home, but many of you brought your mountain with you. Nearly everyone here have come for many miles, some of you thousands of miles, to be loose and liberated from wheelchairs, hearing aids, crutches, canes, and trusses. Those things become mountains. Jesus did not want a mountain to stand between us and heaven, or our blessing, our prosperity, or our health, or our well-being. Amen? And this is the reason why in Matthew 11, he cursed the fig tree. And he cursed the fig tree in a few words, but nobody believed anything had happened because no immediate miracle had happened. But let me read to you. In the morning, as they passed and came back by and returned, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, said to him, Why, Master, look, look. Jesus didn't have to look. As far as Christ was concerned, it was dead the day before. Yeah. 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 Nobody shouted then. Nobody said, look, 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 it's dead. Because there was no evidence sign that anything had happened. But today Peter says, oh, look, Master, it withered the roots. He said, I believe something happened yesterday when you spoke, because now I can see an evidence sign that it's dead. And I'm saying this to you because Christ said it to his followers. Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Believe the word of God. Believe what God says. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall, who? He shall have whatsoever he said. That means me, you, 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 you. You can have whatsoever you say. You can move a mountain. The mountain can be removed for you if you'll say it tonight, Brother Bob. Brother Dunn? Whosoever means you. Amen. And whatsoever means the mountain that's standing between you and the best that God has for your life. Amen. How many believe it? Yeah. Your cancer, your tumor, your daughter, your sickness, your disease. Why, even uh, many of you are having such matrimonial troubles. Domestic troubles have become such a mountain, they are weighting you down until you're so oppressed and tormented. You can't be your best for God. You know that, that's the truth. Many of you are flat broke, you're penniless, you don't have a job, and the demon of poverty has become a mountain. Don't tell me it's not a mountain. It can be the biggest mountain you ever tried to get over, around or under. But Jesus said, if you'll say it, be thou removed and plucked up and cast in the midst of the sea, and not doubt in your heart, you shall have whatsoever he saith. He spoke a few words to ten lepers. Ten. Never prayed one prayer. He just said, go and show thyself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Why? Though there was no evidence sign that their leprosy was gone, they believed there was power in his words. He said to one man, go and wash. And when he washed, he come again, seeing. He said to one man, dip in River Jordan seven times. And when he dipped, he was cleansed of his leprosy. Hallelujah. And every time Jesus spoke the word, a mountain moved. Yeah, yeah. But do you mean to tell me that we can't speak words? Here's what the Lord said, and listen. You said, you believe you're God? Well, the Bible said, if any man, that means you, I'm referring to me, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Oh, go on and praise the Lord. Amen. 
I'm going to speak and your mountain is going to move. Your cancer is going to drop off. Your arthritis, your rheumatism, your high blood pressure is going to leave. Your sugar is going to go. Listen, say, can men do that? In the 17th chapter of 1 Kings, verse 16, the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. I'm quoting scripture. According to the word of the Lord, which he, which God spake by Elijah. A widow woman starving to death heard the voice of a man. But that was God speaking through a man. In 2 Kings 4, when Elisha found the widow woman destitute, bankrupt, preparing to sell her own son to the slave market to pay the bills of a deceased husband, he spoke. But when he spoke, it was not a man speaking, but it was a man filled and anointed with God, speaking as the oracles of God, and it was God speaking through a man. God promised me in Philadelphia a number of years ago that I could speak the word only. And according to 1 Corinthians 16, God said, I will walk in them, I will move in them. And I believe a man anointed of God and filled with God can speak for you. He can speak the words of deliverance. God, Jesus said, whosoever shall say to that mountain. Peter, in the th third chapter of Acts, stopped at the gate of the beautiful temple. There was a man. Got him with a hand. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know what happened? I don't believe that that was altogether Peter talking. That was God in Peter. Paul said to a man in Acts 14, stand up right on thy feet. And a man jumped to his feet. Why? Because he was speaking Amen. the words. So full of God, that is, he speaks. Now bring me that wheelchair down here and get ready to bring the rest of them. How many believe it? Here's a man bound with arthritis and paralyzed and dead from the waist down. Absolutely impossible to walk. Doctors declare there is no help for him that he'll never walk again. Get ready. Do you believe you'll walk again? Yes. When? Uh, right now. Right now. Amen. I'm going to speak the word. For him, I'm going to speak the word for you here. And I'm going to speak the word for you and your home and you and your home. You there in your home, you in your home. My God is going to move the mountain. Brother, you've got a mountain. Yes? Yes. I have a mountain. Do you want to walk again? Yes. You believe you will tonight? Yes, I believe. But you know you can't unless God heals you. That's right. Get ready. This is a mountain. Stand with me, brethren. Pray with me. Get ready. I'm going to call this a mountain of arthritis. Will he walk? Yeah. Will you walk? Yeah. Will your cancer drop off? Yeah. Will God set you free? Yeah. Get ready. What God will do for one, he'll do for everyone. And if God will not do it for everyone, he'll not do it for anyone. Oh, you foul devil. Oh, it's a mountain. I'm so used to calling things devils, but this is a demon. But I'm calling it a mountain. Now, Jesus, don't you feel me? God, there's too many people watching tonight. You can't feel me. Thou mountain of helplessness, thou mountain of destruction, thou mountain of arthritis, 
thou mountain of demoniac power that binds these limbs. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you devil, I charge you. Hallelujah. I command this mountain go. Be thou plucked up, removed, and placed into the sea. Oh, you mountain of crippling arthritis. Go! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Raise your hands, everybody. Rejoice in God. This man has not been able to walk. Impossible for him to walk. Listen. This is a mountain removed. Come on, Daddy. Come on. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. What do you think about it? Oh, it's wonderful. You're walking. Yes, I'm... What do you think about it? Oh, I... I don't know what to say. You're healed? Yes. Amen. Amen. No more than... This man couldn't walk except these crutches. He had to walk on this earth. This is his mountain. tell you. I want everyone that's got a mountain. Come down here and stand in front of me. I'm going to speak the word. And that mountain is going to be removed. You there in your home, raise your hand. Put your hand on your television set. This mountain is going. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. Thou mountain of cancer, garter, tumor, arthritis, rheumatism, sugar, thou foul devil of deafness and blindness, in the name of Jesus I charge you, be thou removed, be thou plucked up and cast out. Go, I charge you, in the name of Jesus, go. Raise your hands and tell him it's gone. Raise your hands. Tell him it's gone. Raise your hands and praise him. It's gone. Write me today. Our mailing address is the Allen Revival telecast. Miracle Valley, Arizona. Our Miracle Million prayer band will join you in prayer until your mountain is plucked up and removed and cast into the midst of the sea. Millions of people join us day after day around the world in a great miracle million prayer band. Tell me your mountain, remember, your mountain is on its way out. Address your letters, telegrams, and prayer requests to Evangelist A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona. Your generous letter is needed today. Don't forget, his mail address is Evangelist A.A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona.